This video is brought to you by JingleMine.com. Founded in Hong Kong, but located throughout the world, they are one of the leading ASIC mining distributors out there. They have a strong relationship with Jazz Miner, which means that they can provide you the best price and the latest info or updates for your Jazz Miner. Additionally, they work hard to respond to customer inquiries or question, providing 24 seven support and have one of the fastest deliveries in the ASIC industry. Some of their products include the Jazz Miner X4-QZ, which can hit 840 mega hash at 340 watts while being whisper quiet. And I can vouch for that. And the new X16-Q is on pre-sale now and can hit 1.8 giga hash at only 630 watts on ETC hash. Lastly, they accept a number of cryptocurrencies as payment. So if you're interested, check out the link in the description and help support our channel by supporting its partners. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech. Welcome back to another episode of Caffeine and Crypto, where I welcome you to join me with your favorite caffeinated beverage of choice, coffee, energy drink, whatever, or some water as we go over some crypto news on our weekly live stream that we do at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, pretty much every freaking week, even when I'm exhausted and tired, just to, uh, well, bring you guys whatever. So, uh, unfortunately, I am, uh, well, it's not unfortunate. I'm just freaking busy. I'm trying to figure out what's going on with my rigs. Got a couple crashes, a couple situations here, but uh, GPUs are hashing away. And I'm playing around with it, changing some things up. I switched pools, and because the pool that I switched to, I have some various parameters in. There was some conflict, so I'm just still finalizing that. But looks stable now. We're good to go. I'm using Putty a tool, and I talked about this in a previous video, that is very easy to use. Yes, you could just go to Hive and launch a shell in a box or whatever but it's right there it's easy and i can easily manage all my windows i can have multiple rigs open it's, i don't know why most people don't use it but it's whatever if you want to use it use it if you don't want to use it don't use it but very easily load up and do what you need to and manage or monitor your rigs and then with windows 11 very easily have all my windows up in front of me good to go i can see the hash rates i can set whatever commands parameters and the beautiful thing is when you change something it doesn't automatically kick you out like shell in the box um you just retype in the command and it brings it back up boom you're back in the minor or what have you really nice and neat anyways i uh, got a couple things i want to talk to you about might ask for the community's help uh, Bitcoin sitting around 26.9K, 20, Ethereum right underneath the 1800 and Binance still over that $300 mark. There has been some news for only for Ethereum, for Binance, um, and a couple other things uh, that we're going to be going over in today's. I do not have the articles in the description, just going to have to bear with me. Because lately I've just been exhausted and still needing to, or wanting to do this show for the community. But, um, you know, for for channel that doesn't get much views and, and not many live uh, live stream viewers then it's almost uh getting to what's the point situation uh but bitcoin sitting at the bottom of the uh bollinger bands here um i don't see it hitting any legacy support it fell below the legacy support the next one down is 25.4 or 20 yeah 25.4 um that we could fall down to but there's something supporting us here at this i mean we bounced off of it one two we bet we went through it came back up three four in the past there is there is some some support slash resistance so i guess 26 7 is a good number i don't know um but yeah a lot of selling pressure a lot of uncertainty and doubt still reigning in the uh the market we're we're currently i think oversold i want to say but we'll see how things go uh, i'm gonna play a little video clip for us here um while i say good morning to everybody good morning to uh sadie g well two different people sadie sometimes and g uh rud how you doing automatic beats and crypto perks appreciate you guys swinging by Let's see what's going on in crypto world. I like CNBC sometimes, uh, not all the time, but let's see what we what we got here. Today, Doquan is reportedly set the green light to return nearly three hundred million. Today, Doquan is reportedly set to be released from jail in Montenegro. Bankrupt crypto lender BlockFi gets the green light to return nearly three hundred million dollars to wallet customers. 
And PitchBook crypto analyst Robert Lay breaks down the research firm's new report out today on VC investments in the space. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World. I'm Jordan Smith. Crypto prices are in the red to close out the week with Bitcoin continuing its decline, trading around $20. I don't care about all the other stuff. I just want Ether dope on. below $1,800, and the Matic token slipped to $0.84. Cents. Bitcoin and Ether are both down for the week, even as new economic data out yesterday showed price hikes cooled last month, with annual inflation reaching its lowest level since April of 2021. All right, let's talk about the top stories. Terraform Labs founder Do Kwon is set to be released from jail in Montenegro on supervised bail. Citing a court notice from today, Coindesk reports that his lawyer's proposal to pay 400,000 euros or $435,000 to be released from custody was accepted as his trial on document forgery charges continues. Under the conditions of his bail, Do Kwan will reportedly be under surveillance and prohibited from leaving his apartment. Kwan and a Terra executive were arrested in Montenegro for allegedly trying to travel with forged documents. Next, Binance US is exploring ways to cut founder Shengpeng Zhao's majority stake. That's according to the information, which cited two people familiar with the situation. CZ has been reportedly trying to sell at least some of his stake since last summer. The information reported that in recent weeks, leaders with Binance US have been discussing how the move could improve the company's standing with regulators. He reached out to Binance US today, but didn't hear back right away. Back in March, the CFTC sued Shengpeng Zhao and his international crypto company for allegedly violating compliance rules to attract US users. At the time, a Binance spokesperson called the complaint unexpected and disappointing, adding that the firm has made significant investments over the past two years to ensure it doesn't have U.S. users active on the international platform. Last bankrupt crypto lender BlockFi got court permission yesterday to return nearly $300 million to wallet customers. Those customers include those with non-interest bearing accounts and excludes the roughly 48,000 who tried to move funds into those accounts during BlockFi's shutdown on November 10th. Those customers received email confirmation that the transfers were complete, but BlockFi never performed the backend work. While lawyers for those customers argued the BlockFi should honor those transfers and return funds to those people as well, the bankruptcy judge ruled that the firm's terms of service allowed it to block transfer requests as part of its broader shutdown. The judge also ruled that customers owned their deposits in BlockFi's wallet program, which kept deposits separate from BlockFi's other funds. But customers who had interest-bearing accounts, well, they didn't own their deposits, which were turned over to BlockFi for use in its broader lending business. So I, I, I remember talking about the BlockFi situation, um, and I actually was one of the lucky few that was able to get my funds out in time because it was like a cascading effect of dominoes. And I was, repost I was posting stuff on Twitter and trying to keep people informed, including with the Celsius situation, which was the bankruptcy filing is done. But, you know, whether or not people are gonna, end users are going to see their funds, uh, I doubt it. Um, and that has about a thousand Matic in it, for at least for me. And so that's that's not, you know, considering where Matic is at, um, you know, and, and even back then, you know, it was still a pretty penny. Um, you know, it's not something that would destroy me, but... Imagine people who have their life savings in Celsius because they were trying to use their earn program to make more money. And that's really what people are, end users are looking for. They're looking for that that convenient form of, you know, because bank interest, uh, whether it's a CD or whatever, is it, it ain't crap, right? So they're looking for investments that, that would, you know, realize returns over a long period of time, not short-term profits. And so they were going to Celsius, they were going to BlockFi, they were going to Kraken. And then the U.S. is cracking down, uh, no pun intended, on uh, those various platforms or earned platforms uh, and, and interest-bearing platforms. So uh, BlockFi, you know, tried to screw over some more people. I don't know why they transferred into BlockFi when BlockFi was shutting down, uh, but they did. Uh, obviously, nothing was done on the back end, and they want to get their money back, so lawyers are fighting for that. Uh, some people don't even have lawyers or the money to get lawyers to represent themselves. So that kind of sucks uh, for those individuals. But uh, Binance US trying to separate itself from CZ is very interesting to me, right? Because if you could separate Binance US from CZ, then you have less likely that the regulators, the SEC and the various uh, officials will come after Binance US directly and more focus on CZ and their international platform, Binance.com. Uh, but I don't know. Very, very interesting to me. And obviously, uh, the Terra Luna, uh, Do Kwan, you lost millions, if not billions of dollars, and you get a slap on the wrist and you get stuck in your apartment. That's probably really nice. 
uh, with some monitoring and making sure you don't leave. That's that's if I did something like that, you best believe I'd be in a federal prison. Um, you know, it, it just sucks. The, the standards that the, the, the rich or the people who have more money um, compared to people that don't have money just is just ridiculous. I, the, the disparity is, is alarming. Um, anyways, moving on, you know, Bitcoin dips below 27 K is what it was talking about. Obviously talking about Doquan and a couple of things, BlockFi, uh, Bitcoin has climbed 65% this year, despite crypto woes experts explain why, um, you know, the banking crisis definitely drew some more attention to it. And it's not really a crisis, but it is a crisis. You know, people are still believing that a recession is looming. Uh, but it does draw interest from people who are concerned about the banking sector um, in general, right? So they, they want to get into various platforms and hopefully they're being smarter now and not using centralized exchanges like BlockFi, Celsius, uh, Genesis, uh, and various entities that file for bankruptcy, FTX, stuff like that. Um, and they're storing the crypto themselves. But the bad thing is, is everybody's storing it and not utilizing it, whether it's to barter, trade, what have you, then we don't really get any price action because everybody's just sitting here hanging on to their money and not using it. Um, and then if somebody does issue, uh, initiate a, a big sell order, then we have a huge price drop. So Bitcoin was created to be utilized as a form of, or, or financial means um, and to allow users to, to be their own bank instead of relying on centralized entities. Uh, but now it's become something that everybody just wants to hang on to for dear life and not do anything with. I remember going to um, a couple restaurants and when they started accepting Bitcoin, I used my Bitcoin to pay for the food. The transaction fees right now are high and I understand why people aren't bothering if it because of the, the high transaction fees. Um, but back then it wasn't so much of an issue the biggest issue for me was the time it took to complete the transaction which is why the lightning network was created so we'll see how things pan out but if everybody's just sitting in their silos hanging on to their food and resources and crypto for dear life and not utilizing it or or, or you know feeding it back into the 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 circle i guess you could say the ebb and flow of bitcoin then bitcoin's not gonna really go anywhere we really need new money and old money to continue to come into the crypto market and and you know uplift it and and make it something more tangible uh and right now you know we're going to be sitting here until that uncertainty uncertainty and doubt dissipate dissipates and that uncertainty and doubt is created by the u.s government um you know when they start having these hard line rules um, that they don't tell you about and start slapping you in the face every time you do something wrong, then you're going to mess up. Well, this is something really deep green over here. Pepe up 58%. I know a lot of people who lost money on Pepe. I hope you guys are being smart. You know, if you were, if you got in back here and you sold over here and you got a, you're a thousandaire now, or maybe a tens of thousand, or maybe a hundred thousand there, maybe you're a millionaire. Congratulations. I'm happy for you. Um, I missed a boat. And I know when I missed a boat, there's no point in me jumping off the dock to try to get on because I'm going to I'm going to get wrecked. And a lot of people did do that. Right. So they, they saw this hype, uh, the meme, the meme coin hype. They probably got into alternate meme coins, hoping that it would blow up. It didn't. Um, and now they lost, you know, what was one hundred dollars turns into uh, sixty dollars. Uh, so hopefully you guys got in at the right time. If not, be careful. Uh, again, you know, these meme tokens. Uh, clearly state there's no intrinsic value. Um, so if you're going to get wrecked, you're going to get wrecked. Don't fall for it, okay? Uh, let me throw some articles in here. Um, if you guys have any questions, I will try to keep an eye on chat. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep rocking and rolling. Uh, nothing too crazy uh, this past week. Just still trying to personally, this is just me personally, if you guys even give a damn. Um, just trying to get the situation figured out. I can't get the car fixed uh, because, or at least not right now, uh, because everybody is backlogged. Um, they can't even see me until June. So right now the family of four is down to one car. Uh, you know, I, other people have worse problems. I'm not concerned. You know, some people can't even get food for their family. So I wish them nothing but the best. I'm not going to complain about my life. My life is okay. I'll be all right. The family will be all right. But yeah, we got to wait on the car. Um, so I got two cars down. 
and uh, only one car for the wife to use to get to work and she needs that car, we'll figure it out from there. But yeah, everything is backlogged. If you have any repairs you need to do to your vehicle um, and you're going to go through the insurance, uh, it just know that it's going to take time for you to complete that. So drive safe, be smart, be aware of your surroundings, keep your head on a swivel. Moving on, Ethereum network suffers uh, finality issues. Um, finalizing transactions. I've tweeted about this, I think, earlier on Thursday. Uh, but yeah, uh, the finalization of transactions take roughly about 15 minutes and refers to the guarantee that the block cannot be altered or removed from the blockchain without burning at least 32% of the total stake ETH, according to the Ethereum Foundation. The network uh, lost finality for roughly an hour midday Friday. Okay, it was Friday. And what appears to be the second issue of its kind in 24 hours on thursday no that's what it is on thursday blocks were being proposed but not validated during a 25 minute window on thursday that's the one i tweeted about so we had another issue i remember somebody tweeted back saying so it begins um you know um, if you were on proof of work you wouldn't have these issues but yeah uh the causes of these outages still remain unclear so the ethereum foundation the devs i did hit up micah i haven't checked with tim Biko. i just wanted to make sure that they were okay uh, and wishing not them nothing but the best but uh the outages they don't have an explanation hopefully there's a post modem mortem uh, which has spurred many in the crypto community to take to social media and discuss to try to figure out what went wrong prominent venture capitalist ethereum supporter uh adam uh cotrain tweeted out if Beacon chain finality has now failed for over an hour. We're uh, at inactivity leak time. We are we are we are at inactivity leak time. Okay, and there is no denying this is now uh, a liveness fault. Hoping that this is just an implementation issue for a single client to fix and not a larger protocol issue. Either way, not good. Um. Yeah, and so here's a seems like Eve has lost finality again, right? So fi uh, it says final, no, 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 no. Um, so that means if, if it, it's not finalized, the block can be altered, from my understanding. What what can you do when in that when it's in that state? It's a good question. Uh, will there be some exploits for that? Probably already is. But Ethereum core developer Eric Connor, Eric, not Eric, uh, but Eric Connor said in a tweet that the network did not go down, but rather that there was a bug in some clients that has already been fixed. Okay, so they say they fixed the issue, but they don't know what caused it. Okay. The finality issue, regardless of the origin or duration, remains controversial despite transactions appearing uh, to process finally. The fact uh, they don't get finalized can mean that they can potentially be reordered or simply ignored. That's a problem. Um... Also, we had Super Fizz uh, talk says, but don't worry too much. He said, as bad as it looks, the chain keeps going and eventually finalizes. So one thing I did say on my tweet was that Ethereum fixed itself on Thursday. I didn't know it continued to happen on Friday. Uh, but yeah, it's a hiccup. It's resolved. But something to keep an eye on with the beacon chain this just gives proof of work personnel a little bit more of a foundation to to stand up and speak like see i told you but uh we'll see how things go you know one thing i like about um like say for example cardano is they had issues or hiccups like this but the chain fixed itself i don't think the chain fixed itself with ethereum i think they found the issue within the clients the validators whatever it might be and patched it but Cardano was able, which had hiccups in the past, was able to fix itself automatically. It just, you know, continued. Um, Ethereum would have continued. It would eventually be finalized. But what was the actual cause? I don't know. I'd be very interested to find out more if, if I could talk to anybody from the Ethereum Foundation. But I'll leave that to some of my uh, larger peers like Son of a Tech or maybe Bits Be Trippin'. But I know uh, Michael's uh, very busy. So we'll see how things go. Uh, very interesting to me that this happened Thursday, but then again, Friday. I don't think there's any reason to be absolutely concerned, but it is something of interest or something to just keep an eye on. Because uh, Ethereum is the largest ecosystem 
out of all you know regarding nfts and projects and stuff like that right we even got pepe on there and honestly when pepe and a lot of the meme craze happened ethereum fees um ballooned like there was no tomorrow we still haven't addressed that even with the updates that we've had uh with shanghai and all that good stuff and some of the other eips we still haven't addressed you know when there is a large implosion of activity whether it's through nfts new cryptos or whatever um the fees ballooning out of control you know like i went to to go look at if i wanted to buy pepe and that's honestly real, one of the reasons why i didn't um uh not only because i missed a boat but it was right at the cusp like the boat left the harbor but i could make the jump i went to go do it and i saw it would be to to, to spend a hundred dollars i would need to spend 35 dollars, and i was like you know what that's not even worth it that's not even worth it because i'm probably gonna lose more um just trying to get on this boat so i said screw it but either way um let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below or in the live chat about ethereum's little hiccups do you think it's a bigger concern? Matter of fact, let's do a freaking poll, guys. Let's do a quick poll. Uh, let's see here. Do you, uh, do, are you, are you concerned about Ethereum's uh, recent pickups? Question mark. And then you got yes, no. And if you say, I don't understand, I don't know or understand, can I even write that? Yes, I can. Boom. There you go. Poll is out. Let me know. Uh, maybe we'll try to get um, one of our colleagues to, to do some content on it. Maybe, uh, we really need somebody that knows the, intric uh, the intricate parts of Ethereum and how everything works. Sorry, I'm really tired. Uh. Binance pulls out of Canada amid new cryptocurrency regulations. This is a big problem. Why do you guys keep calling me, man? I don't know who the f you are. Binance pulls out of Canada amid new crypto regulations. So we had uh, our fellow colleagues in Canada cover this uh, this news topic, including rabbit mining. Um, but this is uh, this is quite unfortunate. Is there going to be a Binance CA now? Well. We'll have to see. I'll check the chat here in just a second. I don't see any ats or super chats drawing my attention to it. Um, so, yeah. Keep on rocking. Binance said on Friday it was withdrawn from Canada weeks after the country issued a series of new guidelines for cryptocurrency exchange, including investor limits and mandatory registrations. Canada has tightened regulations for crypto asset trading in recent months with the introduction of pre-registration process. Uh, the companies that do not adhere to the rules will face potentially enforcement action, according to the website of Ontario Securities Commission, or OSC. Or o yeah, OSC. Unfortunately, uh, the new guidance related to the stablecoin and investor limits provided to the crypto exchanges makes the Canada market no longer tangible for Binance at this time, says the exchange via a tweet. Binance said it does not agree with the latest guidance and hopes to engage with the Canadian regulators to create a comprehensive framework for crypto operations in the country. We are confident that we will someday return to the market when Canadian users once again have the freedom to access a broader suite of digital assets, said Crypto Exchange, um, which we know we know who the owner is. Uh, digital asset industry has been in the crosshairs of regulators around the world, especially since the collapse of Binance rival FTX in November, which triggered a market route in the prices in the biggest digital coins. Following the onset of crypto winter of 2022, which wiped out, we know all about that, blah, blah, blah. So how do you feel, um, how does my Canadian family feel about Binance pulling out of the U.S.? Were you using Binance? Were you not using Binance? Uh, I might take to Twitter to ask that question, but I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Um, I don't use Binance.com. Matter of fact, I don't even use Binance U.S. I may have used Binance U.S. at the very, very beginning. Uh, but I don't use it, which is why Coinbase uh, possibly pulling out of the U.S. could be a huge impact to U.S. citizens because there's not going to be much left as far as cryptocurrency exchanges uh, that one could use, right? Bittrex is left. Kraken is leaving, if not already left. Now, we could still utilize some of those platforms, but there are some regulations and issues with that. Obviously, there's a lot of KYC that you need to do. Um, and if you don't report your taxes properly, they will come and get you. So please report your taxes properly and don't try to evade any taxes. Just give them the information. Uh, you might have to take an L as far as mining profits and this, that, and the other. But just, just report it properly. 
Um, and if there's any confusion, you could always get yourself um, somebody to represent you um, in the case, so to speak. So save up that crypto to pay for your, your lawyer if you do want to invade taxes. That's why a lot of people in the crypto, like a lot of crypto influencers or people with a lot of money have moved outside the U.S. or are permanent residents outside the U.S. because their country has allowed them a little bit more freedom and they won't get hit, especially like people moving to Puerto Rico, my own freaking home uh that i can't go and get go to because if i do i gotta leave my family and i'm not doing that um but you know as a tax haven so we'll see how things go and yes i am puerto rican if you didn't know um actually born in new york so i'm new york rican but binance exit from canada could be a problem as we continue to see more and more exchanges kind of leave not just us but just north america in general so i'm very interested to see how this pans out, what is going to be left for us to utilize, if any, because uh, I really don't want to use a bank to manage my crypto. Because again, the whole point of, never mind, you guys know, I'm just preaching to the choir here. But yeah. <sighs> so the tweet here says, unfortunately, today we are announcing that Binance would be joining other prominent crypto businesses and proactively withdrawing from Canadian marketplace. We would like to thank those regulators who worked with us, collaborated to address the needs of Canadian users, albeit a small market. It held substantial uh, sentimental value for us as the home country of our founder. We've had high hopes for the rest of the Canadian blockchain industry. Unfortunately, new guidance related to stablecoin and investor limits provide the crypto exchanges makes the Canada market no longer tangible for the Binance at this time. We pull out, we pull off we put off this decision as long as we could to explore other reasonable avenues to protect the Canadian users, but it has become apparent that there is none. Our remaining Canadian users are receiving emails with comprehensive information on how they will be impact how this would impact their accounts going forward. While we do not agree with the new guidance, we hope to continue to engage with Canadian regulators aimed at a thoughtful, comprehensive regulatory framework. We are confident that we can someday return to the market with Canadian users once again having the freedom to access to uh, uh, a broader suite of digital assets. So this guy is saying shapeshift, perfect, perfect way to go, uh, you know, switch over to shapeshift. Which you can, right? You can use these DEXs or, or DAP platforms that allow you to, you know, connect your hardware wallet or what have you to uh, buy and sell, trade, whatever. One of the biggest things is an exchange allows us, allows users to, right? So DEXs, you can swap for the currency of your choice at any time. Exchanges allow you to do specific orders, stop losses, limit orders, buy orders, uh, sell orders. And you can be like, okay, if the, you know, there's a flash crash on Bitcoin, which there was a small, small micro one this past week. Um, you know, you could have had a buy order at the low 26 K's and, and picked it up real quick before it bounced back up to the 20, 26.7. Um, so exchanges are just as much, even though they're centralized are just as needed as, uh, decentralized exchanges. So we'll see how things pan out in the long run, but that's quite disappointing. Uh, also Binance states here that crypto exchange its crypto exchange trading volume fell almost 50% in April. Um, so again, going back to everybody wanted to hold on to their Bitcoin, everybody wanted to hold on to their crypto. Understandably, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Um, but if there's no trading of the currency, if the currency is not circulating, um, then we're going to have issues. Um, you know, we got these micro traders or probably most of the trading that's being done right now is all bots. I'm not going to lie. Um, so all these transactions that you're seeing happening on these exchanges are probably not even real people. They're just bots or algorithmic trading. Um, you know, that's, that unfortunately causes a cascading effect because if a huge sell order comes in from a real person, the bots start to adjust, react, stop losses, whatever. And then they continue to follow it down and they, they start pushing the price down even further. Um, and the same thing with the uptrend, right? When people, a, a large buy order comes in, the shorts get liquidated. There's a nice little uptick. The bots follow in suit, and then they continue to push it up until it plateaus, and then things start to level off. So 
very interesting to see that Binance volume has dropped significantly since not be, not going to be available in Canada since Binance.com is not available in the U.S. already, um, and since all of these exchanges are are either pulling out or moving out to to various uh, other markets. Even so, Binance position as the largest crypto exchange remains strong. Coinbase and OKX are second and third ranked by volume, accounted for over 5.6% and 5.39% of total spot trading, respectively. So even though it's a big amount, um, you can see here in the light blues, right? So these the bl light blues down here is primarily Binance, uh, with Coinbase being a little bit darker blue. <coughs> You know, it's it's cracking a small percentage. Binance US a small percentage. So we'll see how things go. But Binance it's going to have to try to weather this turmoil because if we have Binance fall for whatever reason, not saying it's gonna happen, but if we have Binance fall, this could be very problematic for the crypto industry as a whole. We're gonna have to rebuild everything from scratch. Now Coinbase has been around for many, many years. It's been around since OG times. Um so I doubt that they will, um, but with the SEC, the fight that they're taking to the SEC, uh, that again, that, that causes investors and venture capitalists that are inside of Coinbase or, or invested in Coinbase to really cringe and be concerned that the, you know, anytime you go up against the government, the government tends to win, right? Because the government has unlimited resources, you don't. Um, but we'll see how things go. I really hope that Coinbase can can push for that clarity for the industry and then you know when the case is done you can always cite that case uh in future uh depositions or future uh uh court cases so we'll see how things go so magic lucky asked a quick question i watched a recent video on staking ETH on lido but due to staking fees i didn't it didn't make sense unless you were staking three plus ETH. your thoughts fees lower when you stake maybe yes fees were lower when i staked um so i didn't have such an impact also if you look at if you keep an eye on ether scan um you can pretty much find the best time to dang it you can find the best time to the process a transaction let's look at gas so gray isn't too bad right now but that doesn't account for things you, you really got to go look at an exchange to see what the actual so medium transfer fee is two dollars and 14 cents so let's go to uniswap real quick and swap i'm not going to connect my wallet even though it's going to want me to let's say we want to swap out for some pepe uh we're going to do 0 0.01 which is about 17 dollars the gas here is going to be nine dollars and the network fee is nine dollars and fifty three cents. So that's not that's not the gas fee, but that's the, the the overall network fee. The fee paid to miners who process a transaction. This must be paid in ETH. Um, and there's some platforms, by the way, that makes it really easy uh, where you can convert. It, it will convert the currency you're wanting to use to swap into ETH, so you can pay for the gas. So you don't have to have Ethereum on that wallet in order to do the swap, which is nice. I do like that. But in this case, in order to get 9.3 million Pepe or $17, almost $18 worth, we would have to spend $9.53. Back uh, during the, the hype, hype, hype of uh, the meme coins, uh, it was $35. Even if I wanted to do a $20 transaction, it was still $35. So quite ridiculous. So yes, gas fees are hot, a little bit high right now, but they're not as high as they were during the, the meme coin uh, craze or some of the other crazes with NFT markets and stuff like that. Uh, so just give it some time, Magic. Just give it some time. Keep an eye on EtherScan. Um, if you want Transaction Street, you keep an eye on that as well. Um, and then do the swap uh, later on, right? And you can see the averages right now. Look at that. $15 for the B3 swap. That's ridiculous. Sushi swap, $11 curve. Um, how much did it cost you? If you want to stake, what was the fee? Magic Lucky. You use the example of trying to stake 0 0.3 and after staking fee, you lose one year of staking rewards. Yeah, pretty much. Unless you stake a large amount of cryptocurrency, you're probably going to get wrecked, which sucks. Like, that's why I'm so upset with, um, or not upset, just annoyed with Polkadot. 
because they keep raising the gosh blank bar. And every time I have enough to, to get, you know, interest or, or crypto for it, um, it's all like, oh, well, now you got to have 250 polka dots. Like, dang it, man. I keep getting more. The market goes down, so I'm losing money anyways. I'm trying to stake it, but you keep raising the stake bar on me. Like, it's bull crap. Whereas Tezos, Algorand, Cosmos, or Adam, um, you know, you can stake no matter what, what the amount is. I, I don't like those staking platforms or products that or projects that you got to have a freaking minimum. That's annoying as shit. Um, anyways, EU crypto tax plans include NFT and foreign companies draft tax shows. Um, so this is talking about the EU crypto plans. Um, it's five minutes long. We're going to have a quick listen to this. This is uh, this is stuff that, again, you know, you don't need to be the expert on, but just be aware, right? Because what the EU is doing with MICA um, and how they're pushing forward could set the precedence for the rest of the world. So it isn't the U.S. that's leading in crypto regulation. It's the EU. Uh, and, of course, you know, every time somebody else is the leader of something, the U.S. has got to come along and be like, no, blah, 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 blah. It's, like, it's stupid. But welcome to America. Merca. Um, anyways, this is the legislation. Let's see here. Deck eight. The bill, dated May 5th, closely matches proposals made by the uh, European Commission in December 22 as part of a bid to stop the EU residents stashing crypto abroad to hide it for tax from the tax man. The commission would have to set up uh, a register of crypto asset operators by December 2025, bringing forward a previous deadline by one year, and the rules will apply as of June or January 1st, 2026. So this is the their plans to force crypto companies to give tax authorities details on their clients' holdings according to the draft bill released by Coindesk under freedom of information laws, which is funny, right? So the government's got to know everything about you, but when you go asking it questions, no, 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 I don't know what you're talking about. No, you, you can't, you can't have that. No. Okay. You can't have it, but I'm going to redact the shit of it. So you can't even understand what I'm, what it's saying. Um, but tis the world we live in. So let's take a listen. about crypto regulation so the eu is planning to make crypto companies give up details of clients holdings to tax authorities according to a draft bill released to coindesk the law is set to be agreed on by finance ministers next week and will allow tax authorities to share data between the 27 countries in the eu the interesting part of this is it will also require uh firms outside of the EU who serve EU citizens to report into the tax authorities. I'm not quite sure how they're going to organize that, but Adam, I'm going to kick it off to you first. What do you make of this? I mean, it makes sense, but it's hard to do this stuff. Again, when you're talking about these types of international compliance regimes, it is worth noting that they said that if you comply with a local regime that is effectively the same, then you can, you know, then, then that'll work too. Um, but I mean, the challenge is, is that if you're a non-standard project, if you're a project that doesn't have a ton of resources and you want to have EU users, then this is basically saying that you're not allowed to do that. And that to me, again, big warning sign, big flashing, hey, this is something the SEC would do, right? Not really something we would expect out of Europe after the micro report. But on the other hand, you know, it, it is a problem for them, right? And it's the same reason why the EU is both, you know, like, hey, let's regulate stable coins, but also, by the way, if you do more than a million transactions with them, then probably that's too many. They're, they want to look like they're the, the sort of place that's embracing the innovation here, but they're really concerned that ultimately these uh, options could effectively outcompete, uh, you know, their monopolies. And so that's the problem. And that's where they're trying to, that's what, that's what they're trying to do here. So I think it's tough for them to actually get compliance with this, but putting it on the books basically means that if someone doesn't comply, then they're de facto illegal. And that sort of is an end unto itself as well. What do you think, Zach? I think the EU sees opportunity here, and I think they're clearly ahead of the rest of the pack in establishing a framework, right? You can, you can, you know, pick at the fringes and say what parts don't necessarily fit the bill. But obviously, I think the EU has demonstrated leadership in trying to welcome this industry with open arms in a way that's regulated and compliant, right? Maybe more so than in the than in the US, right, where we've seen regulation by enforcement, and seemingly sort of an intent to push things overseas out of the picture, rather than bring it in in a way that makes sense. So I think 
this to me sort of fits that narrative that the EU sees opportunity here, whether it's France becoming more friendly to crypto firms, whether it's Portugal and its efforts to attract a lot of crypto entrepreneurs. You see a lot of these countries in the EU warming to this idea that crypto can be important for them, right? EU largely missed out on sort of the Web2 tech boom. All that stuff pretty much resides in the US. And I think they felt the pain of that. So they are saying, hey, maybe this Web3 thing could be something that the EU becomes known for 10, 20 years down the road. We better get ahead of it and we better sort of have a somewhat friendly embrace for a lot of these countries that have been pushed, uh, sorry, a lot of these companies that have been shoved out of the US and in other jurisdictions. So I see the EU as sort of thinking thoughtfully about this stuff with Mika and now with additional sort of stuff that we're seeing emerge. Um, not to say that it's gonna get, be right every time, but it's certainly a bit more welcoming to the prospect of this technology meaningfully improving people's lives rather than in the US where we see this technology being painted as a tool for scammers and criminals. So, I mean, I'm interested to see what the EU does and I think they do see opportunity and are pushing forward with it, but I'll toss it to Jen. Yeah, I agree with you, Zach. I don't think that we can say, you know, we need more regulatory clarity in the U.S. and then see more regulatory clarity in the EU and then just be totally scrutinizing of it until we see how it actually plays out. I think it would be, I, I think thinking about taxes is important, right? We have, once we get regulatory clarity, well, we need to understand how that relates back to tax. So this makes sense, I think, after the micro report came out. What I am interested to see um, how it develops is this is also going to apply to platforms that are trading NFTs that can be used for payment or investment. And I wonder how they're going to define an NFT that could be used for payment or investment and when that definition is going to come into play. Um, Adam, I saw you raise your hand. So I want, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, like an NFT that's tradable is an NFT that can be used for payment and investment, right? So an NFT that has a market value. So to me, that's a real broad definition. You know, it's definitely better that they uh, that we get like the legislative process actually, you know, going to make these types of rules. That's much better than the regulatory, hey, we already have all the rules we need from 100 years ago approach we've seen. But at the same time, just because they're using the legislative process and actually there's a transparency to it doesn't mean that we have to agree with the rules. Right. That just means that there's actually a debate to be had there as opposed to the alternative in the U.S. where they're like, no, there's no debate. Don't debate this at all. There's no debate. We just have all the power. Shut up. Right. So. <laughs> so, I mean, there's positive and negatives to everything. But this one is going to be very interesting, especially for those who uh, participate in the EU, but don't, uh, you know, the, maybe U.S. citizens that participate with EU companies or EU uh, assets or EU, um, you know, NFTs or, or, or I don't know. This is going to be very interesting how things turn out. Um, not a regulator, not a politician, not an uh, economist, um, but the EU is certainly taking the lead as far as regu regulating the crypto industry. Um, it is a bit unfortunate that you know, they're going to require, there's going to be limitations. They're going to require, you know, every detail about you and um, additional parameters that uh, that they need to process. But these companies that are based or operate in the EU will need to provide their clients information, right? So their personal information, identifiers, what their holdings are. Um, and if you're trying to avoid the tax man, um, the EU is not going to be a good place to do it, which is why, again, companies or uh, certain certain people or companies or, or millionaires uh, use tax havens to really kind of circumvent some of the tax man's uh, uh, reach. But again, Micah, you know, kind of showing that the EU is serious, wanting to bring businesses into their region. Um, it's good to see. It's good to see. What would the U.S. do? Uh, will it change its tactics? Will it change its, its, its not propaganda, but I guess it could be propaganda, basically labeling crypto and people who use crypto as, as scammers and, and criminals and stuff like that, uh, rather than uh, what it was really intended for, which is monetary value and to, uh, you know, allow us to transact across the world, uh, permissionless and free. Um, well, not free. There's obviously a fee for it, but you know what I mean? Uh, you know, if I want to pay you for an ASIC that you have and you're in Germany and I'm in the U.S., I can quickly and easily send a transaction to you or through whatever payment you choose. 
uh, you verify that it's there, you validate the, the and confirm, and then you send me the ASIC, and then we're good to go. Obviously, that requires a little bit of trust that you're going to send the ASIC and not just keep my funds because there's no reversing it. But there's still, you know, it opens up a whole new door of bartering and stuff like that that I really like. So we got about 15 minutes, 14 minutes to Red Panda Mining goes live. Uh, let me check real quick. I'm pretty sure they're scheduled for 12. Yep, they're scheduled for 12. Um, are there any other questions? Let me know. Here for the NFT giveaway. You know, I was trying to do a, what was it? I was trying to do open C. Yeah, this is the asset they got stolen from me. No biggie. Um, I was trying to I was trying to do where I would sell. Does it show? Does it show profiles? There it is. Underscore tech. I was trying to sell some um, some NFTs so that way, you know, like in some of these NFTs, there is some Ethereum, not a whole lot, but a little bit of Ethereum that if you got it, you would own that Ethereum um, and you can move it or transfer it or do whatever you need to. Did they really give it back to me? Hang on. Did they give it back to me? No. Okay. Yeah. I was about to say, wait, what? Page lost. Did they give it back to me? No. No, yeah, yeah. He's got it. Whoever this is right here. And that's just a NFT for the position. It's not not the actual assets. And I should have locked it. I'm pretty sure it's locked down. And if you're watching this and you, you stole those funds from me, I mean, congrats to you. Um, first off, um, I understand the game. I know how it works. Um, I should have used a wallet that I thought didn't have any funds in it. Uh, clearly did have funds in it. And you got it. So uh, you got the W. I got the L. Um, it's not going to kill me in any way or shape or form. But congrats to you. If you want to send it back to me, feel free. You know what my wallet address is. Um, anyways. Um, yeah. So inside of one of these. Or a couple of these actually. Is some um, Ethereum. And I was trying to sell them and then take the proceeds to go help a couple of veterans get their uh, medical uh, cannabis card. Uh, but uh, yeah, the fees were too high. Obviously, the sell pressure wasn't there. So they're just chilling in my profile. I like this picture if it will load it's when i went to formula drift i guess things won't load anyways um yeah moving on Backed master list of tokens, including Ave, Avalanche, Compound, Filecoin, and MakerDAO, and Uniswap. Um, Intercontinental uh, Exchange owned back discontinued its consumer facing app in February as it shifts away from retail. Regulatory guidance and industry developments have led back uh, to master list a number of digital assets. The full list um, is right in front of you, including Phantom, Engine Coin. Cosmos, Gala, and Gala had an update the other day, just FYI. Retro Mike, man, you didn't need to do that. I appreciate it, though. $20, I appreciate you, man. Um, Gala, by the way, if, you, if you're not familiar, uh, Coinbase uh, paused or suspended trading for that particular currency on the 12th, yesterday at 12 p.m., or I think 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, because they're shifting to Gala V2. And the snapshot for Gala... Um, is on the 15th. So if you do not have your funds on an ex supported exchange or wallet, you won't be able to participate in a snapshot and you'll lose out on, on uh, right here, this one, you lose out on the snapshot. Now you may not want Gala V2 because it's, it's whatever, but it, you are going to get a one-to-one. -one. So you're going to have Gala V1 and then Gala V2. Um, you know, what, what are you going to do with V1 after the, the exchange? 
happens? You know, the support, is it going to be there? There's a lot of questions, uh, but Coinbase is not supporting it because they're in the middle of, 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 of a fight with the SEC. Um, so them adding new currencies or trying to add new currencies probably wouldn't be um, best in their situation. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, appreciate the $20, Retro Mike. Thank you so much. You didn't have to. I appreciate it. I, if you have a question, please feel free to ask. Um, but yeah, Loop Ring, Stellar, Sushi Swap, Synthetics, Tezos, Uniswap, all of those have been removed. Following the closing of our acquisition of Apt Apex Crypto, um, and as part of a regular coin listing review process, we have made the decision to list a number of coins in the platform, says a spokesperson for BACT. Our clients and their consumers' best interests are our core commitment, and our review process ensures those interests are best served when we contemplate the most up-to-date regulatory guidance and the latest industry development. So the fact that they delisted all these tokens kind of opens my eyes a little bit. Because this means if if there's if they know something that we don't know as far as the regulations and what's the security and what's the commodity and what's this and what's that, as long as they if they know that and they delisted these tokens, that tells me that various other exchanges might do the exact same thing, and the only place that will be able to participate with these cryptocurrencies uh, might be Dexes, and that sucks because I like Loop Ring, right? And some of the tokens I like on here are Loop Ring, Phantom. Cosmos, Chainlink, uh, Avalanche, even though they had some issues. I sort of like Aave. Um, I like Gala Games. I'm not sure about the cryptocurrency itself. Don't care for internet computer or insane, insane, clown, uh, insane clown posse. Every time I see ICP, that's what I think of. Um, and then obviously Uniswap and Tezos are some of the ones. Synthetics is all right. But yeah. I wonder what the other platforms uh, are going to do. Are they going to delist some tokens? Um, we'll see. That's very interesting to me that they did this, though. So keep an eye on that situation. So we got the EU and what they're doing with the MICA bill and their, their recent uh, clarity as far as regulating the crypto industry. We got Binance uh, transactions down. Right, as all this uncertainty happens and exchanges leave the US and pull out of Canada and all that good stuff. We got Coinbase fighting the SEC. We got Ethereum having hiccups. And we have Bitcoin having a lot of sell pressure right now. Uh, until And everybody hanging on to it for dear life, not putting it back into circulation. So there's a lot of things, little threads that everyone should keep their eyes on, not freaking sit there and watch it 24 seven, but keep their eyes on um, as we move forward. And because of the concerning behaviors of various countries re regarding blockchain or cryptocurrency, uh, I do agree with this statement. It's going to be blockchain, not crypto. I don't even have to read the article. I already know. What they're talking about is that it isn't crypto that's going to survive, it's blockchain. And the technology, the underlying technology itself, uh, that will continue to thrive throughout the centuries. I do believe that crypto, Bitcoin, and, and, and the top assets will, will be here for years to come. I do believe that. But blockchain, the underlying technology, the use cases, the applications, uh, the tools at your disposal with blockchain, I think is the better proposition than the actual crypto. Because a lot of cryptocurrencies these days, what do they freaking do? They don't do anything. They don't do anything new. So what's the tangible use cases? What are the benefits? How can this help the world? How can this improve the world? A lot of cryptocurrencies don't answer that. They don't give a damn. They're just trying to get their money, right? A creator creates a coin, gets their bag, gets pumped up. They sell their bag and they move on to the next project while you're stuck like Chuck. So if they come with a project that, and there's some out there, there's many out there actually, that have tangible use cases and benefits. Uh, we'll just have to see what happens. Texas votes to add crypto to state state's Bill of Rights. Texas lawmakers vote to add digital currency to the state's Bill of Rights, uh, granting individuals the right to use digital currencies like Bitcoin for trading. The United States uh, legislators in Texas have voted to amend the state's Bill of Rights and add a provision recognizing the rights of individuals to possess, retain, and utilize digital currencies. Uh, good job, uh, son of a tech, and those who live in the states. I'm happy for you. Um, but the bill HJR 146 declares that individuals have the right 
to use a medium of exchange that is mutually agreed upon, which includes digital currencies, cash, coin, bullion, or script, not the same script for Litecoin or Bitcoin or um, Dogecoin, for trading and contracting goods and services, and that this and that this right cannot be violated, which is nice. Uh, so no government shall prohibit or hinder the ownership of holding any form of quantity of money or other currency. This is pretty awesome. I like this. Uh, so we'll see how that. So if the U.S. does veto, or not veto, but if the the the, the larger federal government votes to remove or you know ban or whatever currency and texas is saying no they have the right as citizens to use this currency to hold this currency to trade with this currency i wonder how that's going to work so it's going to be the state overriding the, the federal government or it's going to be the government overriding the, the state very interesting i want to see if more states like this adopt this again not a politician not a regulator not an economist but stuff like this i find very interesting and if anybody wants to come on the channel and talk uh to you know not only the ethereum hiccup and provide some more clarity on that but also the regulation of crypto and the way the different states are like for example the governor in florida as silly as they might be um is saying no to cbdc's or central bank digital currencies the te the, the texas uh politicians are saying um, that is their right as an individual to hold, trade, sell, whatever with their currencies. So everybody's state is doing something different, uh, which it would be really nice if everybody would just get on the same damn page instead of doing different things. But it's, it's still a positive indicator. Moving on, Pulse Chain pulls this to life after two years of anticipation, but Hex takes a hit. Pulse Chain, the Ethereum fork, Created by Richard Hart, finally launched on May 12, 2023, after two years of anticipation. The launch was met with the excitement from the cryptocurrency community and with many people eager to get their hands on a new crypto. However, the launch was not without its problems. Shortly after the launch, the price of Hex, the cryptocurrency that was airdropped to post-chain users, plummeted by 27%. This decline in price has led some to question the future of Pulse Chain. Despite the initial price decline, there were still many reasons to be optimistic about Pulse Chain. The network is designed to be faster, cheaper, and more scalable than Ethereum. It's also a number of fe it also has a number of features that are not available to Ethereum, such as native support for NFT and smart contracts. It remains to be seen whether Pulse Chain will be able to live up to its potential. However, the launch of the network is a major step forward in the cryptocurrency industry, and it's possible that Pulse Chain could become a major competitor to Ethereum in years to come. I doubt it, but it, anything is possible, especially with Ethereum having hiccups. So if you guys were involved in this, um, good luck to you. Uh, you know, there's a question here: Is Post Chain a scam? Richard Hart has denied that Post Chain Pulse Chain is a scam. He has said that the project is legitimate and that it has potential to be a major competitor to Ethereum. Your your high hopes there, buddy. However, some people uh, remain skeptical of Post Chain. The point to the fact that the price of Hex has declined significantly since the launch of the network. Uh, they also point to the fact that Richard Hart has a history of making controversial statements. And you got to be careful, especially if you're the creator of a cryptocurrency. Got this article from the beginner's block. Uh, link is going to be in the description if you are interested. So we're wrapping up here. Uh, Red Panda Mind's about to go live. I don't see any questions. Oh, actually, I do. Let me get through those questions real quick. If there are questions. Um, uh, let's see. Are you going to mining disrupt in July? I'm driving down from Tennessee. Uh, we should meet up and grab lunch in Jackson, Miami. Um, I, I might, but the problem is, is, again, the car won't be worked on until mid of, of June, and that's if it could even be repaired. If it can't be prepare, repaired and it gets totaled out, then I'm in a whole different ballpark and I might get screwed. So I don't know, man. Um, it would be nice. The, 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 Bitcoin, um, the Bitcoin conference in Miami coming up very soon. I would have loved to gone. It's priced outside of my budget, but not for the Bitcoin maxis and the many people that are going. I don't have any sponsorship and I don't have anybody that's willing to allow me to represent them at these platforms. Um, so it all comes down to my own personal funds. Um, and right now I got to I gotta get my house squared away. So maybe because this is in July, uh, but it really depends on the car. And uh what happens but yeah mining disrupt 2023 july 25th to the 27th um if i could get there i will try network bits lol stuck like chuck 
Don't FUD my pipe dreams, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, We'll see. We'll see. So anyways, is Red Panda Mining going live yet? Or are they live? Let's find out. Yep. They're going live. If they're not already. Um, so once the stream ends, people are going to head over there. You guys have yourself a wonderful day. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Uh, please do me a favor on the way out. Hit the like button. Make sure to get subscribed. Hit the notification bell. Stay up to date as well as check out some of the links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here. Um, and I will see you next weekend. Um, I'll try to do, continue to do this every Saturday at 11 a.m. Caffeine and crypto. Uh, but um, yeah, we'll see how things go. Uh, otherwise, stay tuned. Follow me on all social platforms, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and Reddit. I do a lot of stuff on Reddit, but under the pseudonym uh, CMB Jacks. And you just have yourself a wonderful day. Take care. I'll catch you next one. Introducing the OctoMiner OctoTank 12 Home Immersion Cooling System. The future of cryptocurrency mining and home heating. Quiet, cool, and efficient. The OctoTank 12 allows you to overclock your ASIC miners up to 70% to get more performance for your money. Compatible with up to two ASICs. Fully plug and play system. The immersion system ensures that your miners stay cool. Perfect for garage or basement heating. Up to 150 square meters of heating capacity. Clean and minimalist design. Fully weatherproof. Designed to last for years. Save money while keeping your home warm and cozy this winter. Order yours now. As a crypto miner, you know you want your equipment to be high quality. Proper cable management is part of your mining rig, and the Veteran Miner has you covered. The Veteran Miner cables are created with the best materials to ensure they are of the highest quality. Our cables are made of 16 gauge tin copper, ensuring another layer of protection from oxidation and corrosion. We support our products with a 100% guarantee. Visit our website at www.theveteranminer.com and get the best cables for your mining setup.